The voters of Stoke-on-Trent Central and Copeland have spoken. And opinion is split. Are the Chatterati more pleased that UKIP have been humbled or that Jeremy Corbyn hasn't been? Sadly for the punsters and headline writers, the town of Workington is in the neighbouring constituency to Copeland, or the result could have been summed up by Workington turns against Labour, not Workington doesn't which instead leaves only the possibilities of the caustic comments about Whitehaven, link below, or for the sports-minded Whitehaven welfare, link below. The fact that Copeland marks the first victory for... Uh, wait a minute, hang on, let me check this. Don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Ah, yes, um, Storm Doris, last Tory victory, last Tory to win here was born in 1870. Worst result since the war. Ah, this is the one, link below. The Conservative victory also marks the first time a rival party has been defeated by the party of government at a by-election in 35 years, when in 1982 the Labour MP for Mitcham and Morden defected from the party to the SDP, link below. It may or may not be further mitigation that this by-election occurred during the Falklands War, with the vote occurring on the same day as two para captured Fitzroy and Bluff Cove, Link below. Labour wasted no time in pointing the finger, with John MacDonald accusing Tony Blair and Peter Mandelson of being them what is to blame. Link below, while calling for party unity. Which can be seen in any number of ways, the most obvious being that Mandelson and Blair and the other has beens of the new Labour Party in the House of Lords should shut up about Brexit, stroke Lexit, stop spouting off as if they have any relevance in modern politics and stick to making dodgy deals with oligarchs and foreign businessmen. One last point to make is that the Labour campaign in Copeland relied heavily on the issue of the NHS and specifically around the proposed closure of the local maternity ward, with Labour going so far as to issue an election leaflet claiming BABIES WILL DIE IF YOU VOTE TORY Link below. So, on to the other by-election in Stoke-on-Trent Central. Link below. Labour won this election. So, obviously, there is no need for self-reflection or consideration or, indeed, recrimination. Oh, no. It's clearly a time for jubilation. Link below. The Labour candidate, Gareth Snell, no relation to Linda, half off, hailed his stunning victory as a triumph for Labour values over the bigotry of UKIP. Link below. Which is code for thank Allah for Mr Hussain. Clearly the highlight of the evening was the UKIP candidate Paul Nuttall last seen asking where's the fucking car? Link below. As he made a hasty retreat. At which point it is perhaps informative to watch this film by John Harris, link below, and to reflect upon his assertion that Labour performs well in constituencies with low turnout. Oh, and let's also remember why Gareth Snell is calling UKIP bigots, link below, and thanking Allah for Mr Hussain. So, while UKIP go off for yet another calamitous relaunch and Labour do all they can to spread apathy in order to maximise the power of their sectional vote, 
Everyone has overlooked Jack Brereton, link below, who at 25 was a rather impressive candidate, certainly more impressive than Snell and Nuttall, who at times resembled Hinge and Brackett, link below. It is also noticeable, noticeable that the chit-chat surrounding Labour's defeat in Copeland has highlighted that the Tories threw their big guns at the constituency, with particular reference to Theresa May going there to woo the voters. Yet no one appears to have noticed that the Prime Minister also went to Stoke on Trent to campaign for Brereton. Link below. That the Conservatives came within 79 votes of UKIP is a rather creditable result, and perhaps a significant tactical victory. As from the Tories' point of view, it keeps UKIP in its place, and Gareth Snell is no fan of Jeremy Corbyn, link below, so it's a piece of clever politics to get him elected. Especially if Labour had lost both seats, the pressure on Corbyn to go would have increased, possibly to the point where he would actually have had to step down. And whatever people may think of Mr Corbyn, he is currently critical to the Brexit stroke Lexit process. So, in political terms, Theresa May is the big winner of the night.